Welcome to part three of my review of Tasha's Cauldron of Everything. In the previous two videos, we talked about the brand new Armorer Artificer, as well as the two new Barbarian subclasses, the Path of the Beast and the Path of Wild Magic. I will link the playlist somewhere up here. You can go check those out if you have not seen it. But today, in this episode, I'm going to cover the brand new features for the Bard, as well as the two new subclasses introduced. So here's the Bard, and to begin, let's talk about the optional class features introduced in Tasha's Cauldron of everything that you could, with consent of your DM, also gain on top of what is presented in the PHB. To begin, let's talk about the additional Bard spells. At first level, you can gain any of these spells. First off, you, the Bard now knows Color Spray, Command, Aid, Enlarge, Reduce, Mirror Image, Intellect Fortress, Mass Healing Word, Slow, Phantasmal Killer, Rary's Telepathic Bond, Hero's Feast, Dream of the Blue Veil, Prismatic Spray, and Antipathy, Sympathy, and Prismatic Wall. So these are now added to the Bard Spellbook, presented in this book. Use these at your leisure. So let's move on to the next optional feature, Magical Inspiration. At second level, if a creature has Bardic Inspiration die from you and casts a spell that restores hit points or deals damage, the creature can roll that die and choose a target affected by the spell. Add a number rolled as bonus to the hit points regained or the damage dealt, the Bardic die is lost. So, Bardic Inspiration can now be used for extra healing or extra damage, giving the Bard even more versatility than they probably needed. But hey, I'm a fan of it. Next up, we have Bardic Versatility, fourth level. Whenever you reach a level in this class that grants the ability score improvement, you can do one of the following, representing a change in focus as you use your skills and magic. Replace one of the skills you chose for the expertise feature with one of your other skill proficiencies that isn't benefiting from expertise, or you can replace one cantrip you learned from this class spellcasting feature with another cantrip from the bard spell list. So you can change your proficiencies or at least your proficiency bonuses for certain skills as you level up. Maybe you don't need a certain one anymore. This is again adding much more versatility than I expected we would be seeing from the bard, but I guess that's their thing. So there you have it. Let's talk about the two new colleges for the bard. Let's first talk about the College of Creation. Starting at level three, you, in, you gain the Moat of Potential. Whenever you give a creature a Bardic Inspiration die, you can utter a note from the Song of Creation to create a tiny Moat of Potential, which absorbs within five feet of that creature, which orbits within five feet of that creature. The Moat is intangible and invulnerable, and it lasts until the Bardic Inspiration die is lost. The Moat looks like a musical note, a star, a flower, or another symbol of art life that you choose. When the creature uses the Bardic Inspiration die, the Moat provides an additional effect based on whether the die benefits an ability check, attack roll, or saving throw as described below. If it benefits an ability check, when the creature rolls the Bardic Inspiration die to add it to an ability check, the creature can roll the Bardic Inspiration die again and choose which roller you use as the moat pops out and emits colorful harmless sparks for a moment. So you get advantage. Instead of just a flat bonus, you would just gain advantage. Very interesting. For an attack roll, immediately after the creature rolls for the Bardic Inspiration die to add it to an attack roll against the target, the moat thunderously shatters the target and each creature of your choice that you can see within 5 feet of it must succeed on a con save against your spell save DC or take thunder damage equal to the number rolled on the Bardic Inspiration die. Pretty helpful right there. And if you use it on a saving throw, immediately after the creature rolls the Bardic Inspiration die adds to a saving throw, the moat vanishes within the sound of soft music, causing the temp creature to gain temporary hit points equal to the number rolled. The Bardic Inspiration Die plus your Charisma Modifier. Versatility stacked on top of versatility is what I'm gathering here. These are very small benefits, but level 3, these are this is all the versatility you need for this. Next up, we have the Performance of Creation, 3rd level College of Creation feature. As an action, you can channel the magic of the Song of Creation to create one non-magical item of your choice in an unoccupied space within 10 feet of you. The item must appear on a surface or in a liquid that can support it. The GP value of the item can't be more than 20 times your bard level, and the item must be medium or smaller. The item glimmers softly, and a creature can faintly hear music when touching it. The created item disappears after a number of hours equal to your proficiency bonus. For examples of items you can create, see equipment of the PHP. So the, the thing that I can think of best with this is actually creating weapons, just standard weapons for your party that might be a bit too expensive for a beginning party to start out with. So that could be nice. I can't really think of anything else at the moment. If anybody has any creative ideas for this, please let me know in the comments down below. Once you create an item with this feature, you cannot do so again to finish a long rest unless you expend a spell slot of second level or higher to use the feature again. You can only have one item created by this feature at a time. If you use this action and already have the item from this feature, the first one immediately vanishes. 
The size of the item you can create with this feature increases by one size category when you reach 6th level large and 14th level huge. So basic equipment or weaponry, I think just to supply your party might actually be the best use of this, which is my opinion. Next up, we have Animating Performance, a 6th level College of Creation feature. As an action, you can target a larger, smaller, non-magical item you can see within 30 feet and animate it. The, animate, the animate item uses the Dancing Item Stat Block, which uses your proficiency bonus, BB. The item is friendly to you and your companions and obeys all commands. It lives for one hour until it reduces your hit points or until you die. In combat, the item shares your initiative count, takes its turn immediately after yours. It can move and use its reaction on its own, but it only takes the action and is the dodge action unless you take a bonus action on your turn to command it to take another action. <sighs> Wizards, I'm, I've am i said it before and I'm going to say it again. Please stop being afraid to give players advantage in the action economy. I really don't feel like a dancing item. Here's the stat block, by the way. I really don't feel like adding a temporary dancing item that gets its own initiative is really going to break balance if you let it move on its own from the player's perspective without them having to use their action. I really don't think it will break balance. Please errata th this and the Drake Warden Ranger if b before we even get to that subclass to let the let our our items our sentient items or pets take their act turns by themselves without us having to do something about it. Anyway, the action can be one in its stat block or some other action if you are incapacitated. The item can take an action of its choice, just not dodge. Like there it is again. Literally doesn't make any sense, but okay. When you use Bardic Inspiration feature, you can command the item as part of the same bonus action you use for Bardic Inspiration. Once you animate an item with this feature, you cannot do so again until you finish a long rest until you expend a spell slot up their level or higher to use this feature again. You can only have one item animated feature at a time. If you use this action and already have a dancing item, that first one immediately becomes an animate. Here's the full stat block. The stats are pretty nice, actually. 18 strength, 14 dex, 16 con. Pretty nice. You can pause and read over this whole stat block if you like. Moving on. Creative Crescendo, a 14th level college of creation feature. When you use performance of creation feature, you can create more than one item at once. Number of items equals your charisma modifier, minimum of two. If you create an item that would exceed that number, you choose which previously item disappears. Only one of these items can be maximum size you can create. The rest must be small or tiny. Interesting. You are no longer limited by GP value when creating items with performance of creation. Very interesting. So... It is based on equipment that you can get in the PHB, though, so you couldn't really exploit this to make some really valuable items, I think. So, unfortunate. But there is the College of Creation Bard. Now, the College of Eloquence is a reprint, but we'll still go over it anyway. I feel like uh, we should see if anything has changed. And regardless, I don't really exactly remember what happened to the College of Eloquence, so let's review it as if we're looking at it for the first time. College of Eloquence. Third level, Silver Tongue. You are a master at saying the right thing at the right time when you make a charisma or deception, persuasion or deception check. You can treat the d20 as of roll 9 or lower as a 10. Very safe. Unsettling words. You can spin words laced with magic that unsettle a creature and cause it to doubt, to doubt itself. As a bonus action, you can expend one use of your Bardic Inspiration uh, to choose one creature you can see within 60 feet of you. Roll the Bardic Inspiration die. The creature must subtract the number rolled from the next saving throw it makes. So you subtract a saving throw from a creature unfailing inspiration your inspiring words are so per persuasive that others feel driven to succeed when a creature adds one of your bardic inspiration dice to its ability check attack or saving throw and the roll fails the creature can keep the die we talked about this before you basically get limitless uses of your bardic inspiration die until it succeeds that's pretty powerful universal speech you gain the ability to make your speech intelligible to any creature as an action choose one or more creatures uh, in the charisma modifier chosen creatures can magically understand you regardless of the language you speak for one hour once you use this you cannot do so against a long rest or use a spell slot of any level and then we have infectious inspiration when you successfully inspire someone the power of your eloquence can now spread to someone else when a creature within 60 feet of you adds a bardic inspiration its ability check tackle or saving throw and the roll succeeds you can use your reaction to encourage a different creature other than yourself to hear you within 60 feet giving it bardic inspiration without expending any of your bardic inspiration uses you can then use this reaction number of times including charisma modifier so you can once per turn bunny hop your inspiration should it succeed pretty standard we did talk about this before but that is all i have for the bard subclasses in tasha's cauldron of everything so what did we learn today did bard win or lose in the book i would say bard definitely won here i think that just 
completely removing the subclasses from the equation, talking about magical inspiration and bardic versatility alone, just buffed bard to a, a good place, I feel, where they need to be at. College of Creation adds even more versatility on top of that, so I think that both of these both of these factors make the a College of Creation bard a very safe pick for your next character. That being said, that is going to do it for this video on the new subclasses for the Bard, College of Creation, and a reprint of College of Eloquence. If you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to leave it a like, subscribe if you have not. I got about 20 or 30 more videos coming out on all the new subclasses, all the new systems, all the new magic items, everything that's coming soon. So be sure to subscribe, not miss a single one of those coming very soon. And until next time, guys, have fun, stay safe, and as always, happy gaming.